This AI can solve tasks it has never seen before, looking at only a few examples. We'll be looking at DeepMind's famous Flamingo paper, what impressive results it achieves and where it falls short, how the model works, and how it was trained. We as humans have a good sense for pattern matching, and as the authors say themselves, one key aspect of intelligence is the ability to quickly learn to perform a new task given a short instruction. When looking at a few examples, we understand what the task wants us to do. But so does the Flamingo model. It can take in a sequence of interleaved images and text and complete a specific task it has never seen before, or rather was never specifically trained on. This is then called few-shot learning and leverages a thing called in-context learning. In other words, it learns to recognize a pattern from looking at a few examples as context. For example, we look at this image and say it is a chinchilla. Then we look at the next image and say it is a Shiba. Now we look at the next image and say it is a... Well, what do you think the expected completion should be? Machine learning models usually need thousands or rather millions of examples to solve a particular task such as this. But the Flamingo model understands the task and gives the correct answer looking at only two examples. It knows that this is a flamingo and where to find it. It understands that this task expects you to read a sign in the image. One would usually train a full OCR model to solve a task like this. But here, once again, the model needs to see only a few examples. Same thing applies to the math example. Or, for example, the task here where it understands it needs to count the animals in the image. This of course also means we can simply input one image and ask a single question about it, usually referred to as visual question answering. But nothing holds us back from following up with a full conversation. Here the Flamingo model demonstrates cool results, where even we as humans would usually struggle a bit. It even knows it is superior to us. Why stop here? The model can also handle videos. It understands what is happening in a video, but in my opinion even cooler is that it can read a word which is never shown as a whole in a single frame, so it has to piece together what is written across multiple frames. That said, since the model architecture leverages pre-trained LLMs, it also inherits their hallucination problem. For example, when asking the model what it can see out the window, it gives a confident answer, the parking lot although there is no window to look through in the first place. Now, this already is really cool, but in my opinion, where this strong fuchsia ability shines the brightest is when applying it to domains with very little data. For example, think of the medical domain, where data is very expensive and scarce. Imagine you can simply provide a few examples of some skin condition with its diagnosis, and the model can then already provide a proper diagnosis itself. Really cool stuff happening here. I mean, we just looked at the qualitative results, and we will have a look at the numbers of how Flamingo dominates the field after looking at the model architecture and training. So how does the Flamingo model work? Let's have a look at the Flamingo architecture overview. The model leverages two completely pre-trained and frozen models. A vision model, which can perceive visual data and encode it, as well as a large language model, which performs a form of basic reasoning and outputs the text tokens. We can then see the actually trainable blocks, the perceiver resampler and the gated dense cross-attention block. In simple terms, we want our learnable blocks to function as a sort of translation between the visual features and the token features known by the LLM. Let's now go module by module. The Vision Encoder is a pre-trained and frozen variant of the Resonant architecture and was pre-trained using a contrastive objective on an image and text pairs dataset. Similar to the CLIP model, I myself first thought why not directly use the CLIP vision transformer, but the authors did a few ablation studies and apparently their resonant based encoder works better. We can here see the worse overall performance with the CLIP VAT and here the better performance when using the ResNet. Okay, so this encoder in the end returns a 2D grid of features that is then flattened to a 1D sequence. And when it comes to handling videos, each frame is encoded independently to get a 3D grid, which is then again flattened to a 1D sequence. Those 1D feature vectors of variable length are then fed into the perceiver resampler. To keep it short, it's 
Again, takes as input a variable number of image or video features from the vision encoder and produces a fixed number of visual outputs. Those can then be fed into the dense gated cross attention layers. That name might sound intense, but if you know how a transformer with cross attention works, it's really nothing crazy. The crazy idea is to actually modify the architecture of the frozen LLM and insert new tradable layers to embed the visual information into the LLM. Other models like Lava or Blip2 also leverage a frozen large language model and frozen vision encoder, but they just try to learn a meaningful mapping of the image encoding in vision representation space to the actual text representation space learned by the LLM. They don't actually touch the LLM architecture, they just fix the input. Back to the Flamingo model. The frozen LLM is some transformer decoder with multiple self-attention block layers. The authors extend this architecture by inserting those gated cross-attention layers that are almost the exact same transformer block but with cross-attention instead of self-attention. The query is, as usual, the language input or the output of the previous language model layer. But the keys and values are now the vision output of the perceiver resampler. It's your standard encoder-decoder cross-attention idea. We also again have a standard feed-forward layer and skip connections. But now there is this gated thing, this learnable 10H gating which provides a lot of training stability. I mean, imagine you train your large language model with a certain architecture. Each layer has learned to interpret the output of its previous layer, and then all of a sudden you add a new, untrained layer in between. The signal that is forwarded through the network will again be completely random. To mitigate that, the authors combine the skip connection with a scaled version of the new cross-attention layer. We can best understand this when looking at the implementation of this layer. Our gated cross-attention output is the language input Y plus the cross-attention layer output times a scalar. The feed-forward output, as you can see, follows the same idea. If this alpha x-attention or alpha dense is initialized with a zero, we multiply the new layer output with zero and effectively just forward the same signal as if we hadn't changed the original LLM architecture at all. And over time, during training, this alpha is learned to be increased to a point where the new layer output is actually considered by the LLM and hopefully starts to make sense to the following frozen language model layers. And as we can see here, it in fact does happen exactly that. That's all there is to the model architecture. We have an input sequence with visual and textual data. The text data is input to the large language model as usual and the images get passed through the frozen vision encoder and then the trained perceiver resampler. Gated cross-attention layers are nested in between the actual LLM layers and receive the image embeddings as keys and values. One final detail is how the text data is processed and the model then trained. Each actual image in the image text sequence is replaced with an image text token. But this description of the process text is still not 100% accurate. The authors define one image and text pair as a chunk that is part of the entire sequence. So they start the entire sequence with a begin of sequence token, replace the actual image with an image text token, then add the corresponding text and end the chunk with an end of chunk token. Then they can start a new chunk with an image and text and so on. You get the point. Now, how does the attention and cross-attention work? When having a sequence without images and predicting the next token, the standard self-attention mechanism attends to all tokens, and all individual tokens cross-attend to nothing, since there is no image. If we now want to predict the next token, grass, and have one preceding image, again, self-attention attends to all tokens and now has a dependency on one image token, so it expects there to be an image. Now only the tokens of the second chunk, the chunk with this image 1 and its corresponding text, cross attends to the actual image. And if we have a second image in the sequence and want to predict the next token, dignified, self-attention now actually has a dependency on all image text tokens. But again, only the text tokens in the third chunk that includes image 2, the image of the cat, actually cross attends to the actual image. This phi indicates which image, or in fact video, a text token can cross attend to, or is zero when there is no image or video. All tokens of chunk zero cross attend to no image. 
all tokens of chunk 1 cross attends to image 1, and all tokens of the final chunk cross attends to image 2. This logic is actually implemented by using a masking matrix for the cross attention mechanism. Dark blue unmasks tokens or allows them to cross attend to whatever image the perceiver resampler provides. During training, we then of course also have the standard mask self-attention to make use of the transformer's parallelism. In practice, the authors train on sequences with only up to five images. Yet the model is able to benefit from up to 32 pairs or shots of images or videos and their corresponding texts during evaluation. They use a mixture of three kinds of datasets, all scraped from the web and process those to follow the just discussed format. They train on a dataset with image text pairs, video text pairs, and one interleaved image and text dataset that the authors collected themselves and call the Multimodal Massive Web Dataset, or for short, M3W. The final objective is of course the standard next token prediction, where the gradients are accumulated across all datasets, meaning they train on one sample or batch per dataset, accumulate the weighted loss across datasets, and then backpropagate, instead of training on one dataset after the other. This again just seems to work better, as they also show in an ablation study. Okay, that was a lot, so let's relax a bit and look at some numbers the quantitative results. Flamingo completely dominates other zero and few short state-of-the-art models, and some specifically fine-tuned ones. A fine-tuned model here refers to a model that was specifically trained on hundreds of thousands of annotated examples to solve a certain task like visual question answering, image captioning, content classification, event captioning, and so on. Remember, Flamingo was trained on different types of datasets, but can generalize to a new task by only looking at up to 32 examples, instead of those hundreds of thousands. Now if you look at the magenta bars, you can see how well the Flamingo model performs relative to a specifically fine-tuned model. For example, on the VQA V2 benchmark, it achieves 75% of the performance of the fine-tuned state-of-the-art baseline model but it outperforms the previous zero or few-shot state-of-the-art model. In fact, it outperforms all previous few-shot state-of-the-art models and also beats 6 out of the 16 fine-tuned models. Those are really impressive results. Again, keep in mind that Flamingo adapts to a task it has never seen before, with only 32 examples. And what if we, just for fun, fine-tune the Flamingo model, like the other baselines, on the 9 tasks it isn't already the new state-of-the-art? Well, Flamingo then also sets a new state-of-the-art on 5 of them. So yeah, the Flamingo model is pretty impressive. It's a general purpose model that can be applied to image and video tasks with minimal task specific training data. And since everything is going towards multimodal anyway, here's a video where I explain Meta's new chameleon model that can also do image to text, but additionally text to image, i.e. image generation. Bye.